Good morning, welcome to day five of Vlogmas. This morning I'm starting off with a little bit of sewing. I'm trying to get that popcorn bag sewn up because it is more of a priority for me. I don't know if I mentioned in previous videos, but I tend to sew in the kitchen when I'm sewing early in the morning. And that's just because our bedroom is right next to our sewing room, so or to my sewing room, the sewing space. So I don't wanna be waking my husband up if he's still in bed. So that's when I tend to come into the kitchen, but I do sew in that room, I promise. That is where I do most of my sewing. But this morning, like I said, I wanna get that popcorn bag sewn up. I don't think I have mentioned that I got the tutorial for the popcorn bag from another YouTuber. It is Christine Sews A Lot. I really do like to support my fellow YouTubers, especially if they've had a really good tutorial like she did. I'll put a link to it down below, so if you're interested in making it yourself, then check her out. But I'm hoping to get that sewn up quite quickly. Theoretically, it shouldn't take very long, but you know, there's the reality of sewing and things sometimes don't go as you expect. But if I manage to get that sewn up, I might just have a look at possibly starting to cut out the fabric for my Christmas dress as well. We'll see how I go. thread chicken which means I am winning at life and this just needs to get turned inside out now you can have the big reveal moment with me oh I love this fabric it is so so fun <laughs> we're good we have done it ladies and gentlemen I beat the deadline. I love it. I hope they love it too. So I'm gonna be very good and pre-press my fabric before I cut my fabric out. I will be completely honest, I very rarely do this, but I feel like there's gonna be too many eyes on this project. <laughs> And it would be a lot more embarrassing if it turned out to be a total mess because I was a little bit sloppy. So I'm going to press my fabric and I am going to make some minor adjustments to my pattern piece. So I'm doing the forward shoulder adjustment, half inch forward shoulder adjustment that I told you about before. But I am also going to be doing an additional adjustment to raise up the arm hole by half an inch. I had a message from somebody on Instagram. You guys are the best. In The, the sewing world is the best, honestly. It is a lady, her... Her username is Meta and me, M-E-T-A and me. I don't know your name, so I'm sorry, I've only got what you've sent me or your, your um, account you've messaged me. But what she suggested is to actually raise the armhole by half an inch, which I was worried was gonna make it not fit well in the bust. And she drew me a diagram. And this is why the sewing world is like the best. The sewing community are the best people. She showed me this, she sent me a diagram. I'll show you guys so that you can see of how to do that adjustment. And that shouldn't change how it fits in the bust area. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in addition to my half inch forward shoulder adjustment, which is my standard. And if I manage to get the pattern piece adjusted and the fabric pressed, I can start to cut this dress out, but I have a feeling it's probably gonna end up too late and I'll end up getting into breakfast with my husband. But at least I'm further along than I was when I woke up, so I'm happy with that. Fun little project right now I'm making something called hot chocolate bombs this was something I got the idea from my cousin Laura who made them last Christmas hello Laura if you're watching love you and miss you and definitely inspired by a lot of stuff that you do so Laura made these and actually sold them in the hospital she works in she's a neonatal nurse and I thought they seem like they'd be a whole lot of fun and I'm gonna give them out as Christmas gifts. So I'm not gonna go overboard and make a ton. She went really over the top and made a ton of different flavors and made a load of them. I'm just making enough for gifts that I'm gonna give out to my work colleagues and then to have a few spare for myself, partly just because the molds make 
six at a time. So you have these little silicone molds, fill them up with chocolate, make them sort of tempered and hardened chocolate inside, and then you sandwich them together with some hot chocolate powder and marshmallows in the middle. The idea is that you pour hot milk over the top and then it melts the chocolate and the marshmallows are released. And I really hope it works out how it's supposed to. So that went really surprisingly well. I'm very excited about giving those out as gifts. I think they're gonna be such a fun thing to have. I have to mention as well, Megan from Megan G Makes also mentioned in a previous video told me that she'd made those with her daughter last year, which seemed like such a fun project. I do highly recommend making these because it was really a whole lot of fun. I use the silicone molds and I think that's a bit easier to use. I will put a link down below to the recipe that I used a little, there's a video tutorial of how to make them as well, but those are gonna be a very fun gift. Now it is time for our advent calendar. Today we are the fifth, so let me find the fifth on here. I've got a nice rug. Where are we? Number five. It's a longer label and it looks sparkly. <laughs> I've got three of these ones again. <laughs> Whoops. And I think this will be a very nice one to put on some projects. We've got Fabulous, with a bit of sparkle. That would be cute. I'm gonna be so stocked up on these guys. I, I don't use sewing labels for every project, but I might have to start. I've got a little bowl going where I'm putting these and I'm gonna be very set up for the rest of this year, but these are just such a little tree every day. I've got another crafty project to do now. We're getting back to those Christmas cards that we tried doing yesterday. So I'm hoping it's gonna go a bit more smoothly today because I've got more of what I apparently needed to have yesterday. So we'll see how it goes. So far, I think I'm doing pretty well. I've managed to work on some sewing stuff. I've managed to make my hot chocolate bombs. If I can get the Christmas cards done, I'm extremely happy. So let's see how it goes. these turn out they are better than I had hoped honestly I really love the little snowman he is the star but overall they all look great the colors work really well and the stamps have such a fun little retro look to them I think Merry Christmas definitely is a factor in that just to say if you are in my extended family I'm sorry guys you are not getting Christmas cards from us this year 
For one, it would just be way too much to make all of these, but also just the shipping. I have a big family. If I include all of my aunts and uncles and cousins, I think we'd end up shipping something like 40, 50 cards. We've done it in the past and it's cost us over 100 pounds. And this year, we're not doing that, but these are gonna go to my immediate family and my grandmas because grandmas are important. But I really loved doing these. Let me know if you've ever made your cards before, Christmas cards, because I think anything handmade to me is just, it sings Christmas, like it's so, so perfect for this time of year. But I think these are just such a fun little project. It's been a good day, a productive day, I have to say. Tonight we are making a big favorite in this household. I'm making Toad in the Hole. I feel like as an American, I need to do my part to reassure the rest of the world that there is actually some really good food in the UK. I think when people travel to this country, they end up going to really random restaurants and go to a lot of chain places that are really terrible. But the homemade British food is excellent. And this is one of my favorites. So Toad in the Hole, if you're not familiar with it, is a Yorkshire pudding with sausage in the middle. I feel like I need to kind of back that up a little bit. Yorkshire pudding, if you're not familiar with it, there's actually a recipe in the Betty Crocker cookbook called Popovers, which is Yorkshire pudding. But it's basically just batter, so it's eggs, milk, and flour mixed together. But you can also add, this has got a little salt and a little thyme in it. And you pour that into a big pan that has some sausages that have cooked in it. So the pan needs to be hot, and they are like British banger sausages. I'm sure you could use any kind of sausage really in the States. Um, or out of the UK if you can't get British bangers, but if you can get British or um, Irish sausages, those are going to be your best bet for this dish. But you cook the sausages like earlier and have a really nice hot pan, pour the batter into it and then put it in the oven at a high heat and it rises beautifully, it tastes amazing, we like it with some gravy on it and we usually end up with ginormous portion because I use my huge cast iron skillet because it's what I've got and we always finish it. A little embarrassing but it's the truth it's a big favorite and I wanted to show it to you guys so it's Sunday evening we've just had a Skype chat with my parents every Sunday we talk to them back home in Chicago and we have a little routine going where after we talk with my parents we will watch an old episode of the Muppet show we've been working through it such a classic show, always just good, clean fun. So we're gonna do that and while we have, or while we watch the Muppets, we're gonna have to try out one of those little hot chocolate bombs. We haven't tested them to see how they work, but they look great and I think they're gonna work out and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. But I will see you guys tomorrow for another day. I hope that you're all doing well and I hope that you tune in again. Bye.